الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. As Muslims, when we see people who fall victim to sin, we should learn how to see them as human beings first before seeing them as sinners or as hypocrites. It's, evil to, it's easy to categorize people, to put people in categories, and it makes it easy for us to view them and to identify them, as opposed to seeing people as human beings first. Because the fact of the matter is that we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual people having a, a human experience. And it's complicated. Sin is complicated. And it took me as a, as a Muslim a long time to figure this out. Sin is complicated. And people don't just commit sin simply because they, are dis, you know, they love disbelief. They're you know, hypocrites, they're munafikun, or they have some traits of hypocrisy, or you know, uh, they just love kufr. Sometimes people commit sin for reasons that are just very innocent. Sometimes it's due to ignorance. Sometimes it's due to su wujha to nadr. It's just due to a bad perspective or poor choices. People commit sin for these reasons, and until we see human beings, we see Muslims as human beings first, who are having you know, difficult times, um, we'll, we'll, we will continue to you know, dismiss the human side of them and just put them in categories. So I'm going to mention a, a couple of examples to show that sometimes what we might see might not be what the situation actually is. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned in the authentic hadith on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar uh, about three people who were trapped in a cave, three men who were traveling and they, had, they got trapped in the cave. And they use what is known in Islam as tawassul, is seeking a means of approach by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove some difficulty from you because of some good deed that you did. And you say, oh Allah, if I did this seeking your pleasure, then do this for me. This is what is called tawassul. And we can, this is permissible in Islam. And one of the three, give you an example. He said, Allahumma, kanat li ibn tu ammin, wa kanat ahabu nas ilayya fa aradtuha an nafsiha fam tanaat. He said, Oh Allah, I had a female cousin, female paternal cousin that I loved more than anyone. I had a desire for her. Fa aradtuha an nafsiha. And I wanted to be intimate with her, wanted to have relations with her from Tana'at Minni, and she refused. So this shows you that she wasn't inclined towards sin. Lam tamila ilay. Like she didn't incline towards the sin. She refused from Tana'at. Showing you that there wasn't a, a, a just this natural you know, desire for sin, as we all you know, put that on people, that they just naturally have a, a desire for sin. She refused. Here's, here's the shahid. Until time passed and poverty began to overtake her. She became in need of the money. Fajatni Kala Fajatni. So then she came to me after you know, time had passed and, you know, difficult times, she had fallen on difficult times. He said, so I gave her 120 gold dinars, gold, gold coins, that she would let me have my way with her. Which is why Umar radiallahu he said, that if poverty was a man, I would kill him. Because poverty makes people do things that they wouldn't normally do. In a normal instance, as you see, when she wasn't in need, she refused. However, when she fell on hard times, and it's easy for us to say, well, during those times, you should fear Allah, brother. You should put your trust in Allah. You should do this. You should do that. Yes, in theory. In theory. But everybody's circumstance and situation is different. And I'm not condoning sin. But what I'm saying is that we should see people as human beings first. 
and not see them as, oh, he's a sinner, or oh, she's a sinner, she's doing this, she's being disobedient to Allah. That's a very childish and very immature outlook on people who fall victim to sin. But understanding their human experience that allows us to see them as human beings first. He says, so I gave her 120 dinars that she would let me have my way with her. He said, فَفَعَلَتْ So she did so. حَتَّى إِذَا قَدَرْتُ عَلَيْهَا وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ قَالَ حَتَّى إِذَا وَقَعَتُ بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهَا نَظَرَتْ إِلَيَّ وَقَالَتْ يَا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ اتَّقِ اللَّهِ وَلَا أُحِلُّ لَكَ أَن تَفُضَّ الْخَاطِمْ إِلَّا بِحَقِّهَا he said that when I got down and got in between her legs, she looked at me in my face and she said, fear Allah, fear Allah. That conscience set in, although she agreed, that conscience was still there. And this just shows you that the heart is still alive, the qalb hay, the heart is alive, that you commit sin and you know that it's wrong, you feel bad. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the believer, that when he commits sin, he sees his sins as a sakha, as a boulder getting ready to taskut ali, about to fall on him. And that the munafiq, he sees his sins, kadhubab waqa ala anfihi fayaf'alu bihi hakada wa hakada. And the hypocrite, he sees his sins as a fly that lands on his nose, and he just goes like this, like it's nothing. But the believer, when he commits sin, the Prophet said, anadma tawbah, anadma tawbah. كَقَوْلِهِ الْحَجُّ عَرَفَةِ النَّدْمَ هُوَ التَّوْبَةِ يعني هُوَ أَصْلُ التَّوْبَةِ He said, remorse is the essence of repentance. To feel bad about it. Just like he said that عَرَفَةِ is حَجْ. حَجْ is عَرَفَةِ Meaning that the essence of all of حَجْ is centered around that one particular act which is so important that the basis of حَجْ is founded upon it and that is عَرَفَةِ Standing on الوقوف بالعرفة he said that nadma, tawbah, that remorse is tawbah, to feel bad. If you commit sin and you don't feel bad, you have not made tawbah. She said, he, he said, when I got down in between her legs, she looked at me in my face and she said, Ya Abdullah, ittaqillah, O servant of Allah, fear Allah. وَلَا أُحِلُّ لَكَ أَن تَفُدِّ الْخَاطِمْ إِلَّا بِحَقِّ It's not right for you to do what you are getting ready to do, except with do right. يعني بِعَقْتِ النِّكَاحِ Except with marriage, it's not right for you to do this. He said, فتحرجت. He said, so I got up off of her. You know, she said something to me that struck me. And it shows you that even sometimes a person that is knee deep in sin, sometimes, if you remind them, he'll take the reminder. Sometimes we see a person in sin and we refuse to say anything to them. Why? Why say something to him? Look at him, he's a sinner. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. If you remind him, sometimes he'll take a reminder from it. He said, فتحرج. I got up off of the woman. I, it scared me when she said that to me. He said, And I left the money. I got up and I walked away and I left her the money. I didn't even take it back. And he said, Oh Allah, if I did this seek in your face, then remove us from the situation that we're in. And the boulder removed a little bit, but not enough for them to get out. The point that I'm making is that the woman didn't commit sin simply because she had a desire to commit sin. Although someone from the outside looking in could see the situation and say, Astaghfirullah, look at these people, they're committing sin. But we don't know the things that drive people to commit sin. People have, people sin for different reasons. And we have to understand that, you know, uh, as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned in a line of poetry, li qalbika maqlataini kilahuma uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the rest of it. Nonetheless, he said, لو شاء ربك لكنت أيضا مثلهم فال, uh, فالقلوب بين أصابي الرحمن In a, a line of poetry called Nuniya, he said that you should make for your heart two eyes, that when you look at people, you look at people with both eyes. And you, you see them through the lens of a person who is falling victim to his own, you know, his own weaknesses. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, Allah could have made you just like them. Because the hearts of the children of Adam are in between the two fingers of, Rah of a Rahman. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted, he could have made you just like them. 
So who are we to look down on people now because we see them falling victim to their own weaknesses? And in ending, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, ja'ahu rajulun wa qad saraka abduhu. فَقَالَ لِهَذَا الْعَبْدُ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعْلَى عَنْهُ قَالَ لَهُ لِمَاذَا سَرَقْتُ قَالَ سَرَقْتُ لِآكُلْ لِأَنَّ مَوْلَاهُ لَمْ يُنْفِقْ عَلَيْهِ فَسَرَقَ فَقَالَ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعْلَى عَنْهُ لِهَذَا الْمَوْلَى لِهَذَا الْوَالِي قَالَ لَوْ جِئْتَنِي مَرَّةٍ ثَانِيَا وَقَدْ سَرَقَ عَبْدُك and he said to Umar, cut his hand off. So Umar turned to the servant and asked him, why, why did you steal? Just want to know, why, why did you steal? And he said, because my, my, the person who owns me doesn't feed me. I stole so that I could eat. It wasn't just a natural inclination to steal. I stole so that I could eat. Umar turned to the, the owner of the slave and he said, that if you come to me again and your servant stole from you for a second time, I'm going to cut your hand off. Why? Because you were the sabab. You were the sabab. You were the reason that drove the individual to steal. Here in this society, we have people who sell drugs, who steal, who live in such you know, poor and unfavorable conditions. Some of, some of whom grow up in these situations. They, they, that was the hand that they were dealt. They, they didn't have a silver spoon in their mouths. And we'll say, oh, you were born and raised in America and you didn't take advantages of the opportunities. What opportunities? If you were born to a mother who gets high, who lives on welfare, father who is absent, what opportunities do you have? Please tell me. What opportunities do you have? I'm not condoning that, but what I'm saying is that the circumstances surrounding everyone's situation is different. And sometimes we have, need to learn when we see people, we need to see past what is on the outside. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا ظَاهِرَةً مِنْ حَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ هُمْ غَافِلُونَ That all you know is the outward of this life. But what is beyond that you are totally heedless of? Beyond your capacity. I mean, is the most merciful of those who have mercy while we struggle to find it in our hearts to have mercy on people. We struggle to have mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yaghfir wa la yubali. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives and he doesn't care. While it might take us years to learn how to forgive people. It may take us years to learn how to have mercy on people. And so this is what I wanted to present in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslimin kathira wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.